The day the vortex opened, it was as if the sky itself had split asunder, bleeding darkness into the blue expanse of Earth's atmosphere. Across the globe, people stopped in their tracks, their eyes drawn upward to the celestial phenomenon that defied explanation. It was a rupture in the very fabric of space, a swirling maelstrom of shadow and light, from which emerged the silhouettes of ships unlike any crafted by human hands. These vessels, vast in size and alien in design, hovered in silence, casting colossal shadows over cities and countrysides. Their arrival was not heralded by declarations of war or promises of peace. Instead, there was only the ominous quietude, a suffocating anticipation that gripped the hearts of all who beheld them. Across the galaxy, similar scenes unfolded on a hundred worlds. The Galactic Union, a confederacy of species that had long presided over a fragile peace, found itself paralyzed by fear. Historically, the appearance of the Vortex signaled the coming of conquerors, entities so advanced that resistance was futile. Systems that had once buzzed with commerce and communication now went dark, as civilizations prepared for the worst. They remembered the old stories, legends of worlds swallowed by the darkness, of species erased from existence by the enigmatic invaders. But on Earth, the reaction was starkly different. Where others saw the end, humans saw a challenge. It wasn't that they were unafraid. The fear was palpable, a tangible thing that filled the air like a thick fog. Yet, it was met with a resilience that was uniquely human. Governments that had been at odds for centuries found common ground overnight. Old grievances were set aside, replaced by a unified determination to stand against whatever came out of the vortex. The United Nations convened an emergency session, broadcasted worldwide. Leaders spoke not of surrender, but of preparation and defiance. We are faced with the unknown, the Secretary General declared, but we are no strangers to adversity. Humanity has weathered countless storms. We have faced down threats both natural and man-made. Each time we have emerged stronger, not because we were unafraid, but because we faced our fears together. Military forces around the globe were mobilized, not in aggression, but in defense. Scientists and engineers worked feverishly, pooling their knowledge to decipher the technology of the alien ships, to find some means of communication, or failing that, some method of defense. But it wasn't just the actions of governments and militaries that defined humanity's response. Across the planet, individuals reacted with acts of kindness and solidarity. People opened their homes to one another, shared resources, and stood together in vigil, looking up at the sky with a mixture of awe and defiance. In this moment of existential threat, humanity discovered its best self. It wasn't a single nation or a single individual. It was a collective spirit, a shared determination to face the unknown not as disparate peoples, but as one. And when the first alien envoy descended, touching down amidst the ruins of an ancient war-torn city, it was met not with weapons, but with an outstretched hand. A delegation of Earth's finest, diplomats, scientists, and even artists, approached, ready to communicate, to learn, and if necessary, to make a stand. The visitors from the Vortex, so accustomed to encountering species paralyzed by fear, found themselves confronted with an anomaly. Humanity, with its myriad flaws and boundless resilience, offered not submission, but partnership. In that moment, a new chapter in the galaxy's history began, one not written in the language of conquest, but in the words of mutual respect and curiosity. The arrival, as it would come to be known, was not the end, but a beginning. A testament to the indomitable human spirit, it was a reminder that even in the face of the vast, unfathomable unknown, there existed the potential for unity and hope. And as the sun set on a world forever changed, humanity looked to the stars not with trepidation, but with a newfound sense of purpose. As the dawn broke across a tense earth, humanity's collective resolve shone brightly against the backdrop of uncertainty. The alien ships, silent sentinels in the sky, remained enigmatic their intentions unreadable. Yet, despite the overarching threat they represented, an unspoken agreement had been forged worldwide. Earth would not cower in fear. The global response was swift and unprecedented. The United Nations, acting with a newfound unity, established the Earth Defense Coalition, EDC, a body that amalgamated the military and scientific resources of all member states. The EDC's mandate was clear. Prepare for any eventuality, be it diplomatic, scientific, or martial. In the weeks following the arrival, human activity reached a fever pitch. 
Military bases became hives of activity, with soldiers and engineers working side by side to adapt Earth's defenses for potential extraterrestrial threats. Scientists, previously confined to theoretical work and remote observation, now found themselves at the forefront of humanity's response, deciphering alien technology recovered from past expeditions and integrating it into human systems. In space, the International Space Station was repurposed as a command outpost, coordinating Earth's orbital defenses. Satellites were reconfigured for surveillance of the alien fleet, while experimental spacecraft, the product of international collaboration, conducted cautious maneuvers, probing the invaders' intentions without crossing thresholds of aggression. Amidst this whirlwind of activity, humanity's spirit was not only preserved, but emboldened. Across the globe, people rallied, offering their skills, time, and even their homes to support the effort. From the construction of underground shelters to the crowdsourcing of ideas for communication and defense, the crisis had ignited a wellspring of innovation and solidarity. The first test of Earth's resolve came sooner than expected. A single alien craft, smaller than the colossal ships but daunting nonetheless, descended towards the United Nations headquarters in New York, initiating the first direct contact since the arrival. The world held its breath as the EDC deployed its newly formed first contact team, a diverse group of diplomats, linguists, scientists, and military personnel trained for the delicate task of establishing communication with the visitors. As the alien vessel landed, its design bewildering to human eyes, the first contact team stepped forward. Their approach was broadcast live, a show of transparency and unity to a global audience. The team's military escort remained a respectful distance back, a necessary precaution, but one tempered by the hope for peaceful engagement. The alien craft's doors opened, revealing beings that were at once utterly alien and eerily familiar. Bipedal, with complex facial structures and covered in shimmering iridescent scales, the aliens observed the human delegation with what could only be interpreted as curiosity. The initial moments were fraught with tension, each side observing the other across an expanse that was more than just physical. Then, Dr. Lena Morales, a renowned linguist and the team's lead communicator, took a tentative step forward, her hand extended in a universal gesture of peace. The response from the alien, a gesture of its own, was not immediate, but when it came, it was a mirror of her own. A connection, tenuous but real, was established. In the days that followed, humanity and the visitors, now known as the Avarians, engaged in a cautious dance of diplomacy. The stand, as this period came to be called, was not just a confrontation, but a test of wills and ideologies. The Avarians, with their advanced technology and enigmatic motives, presented a challenge unlike any humanity had faced. Yet through it all, humans stood united, their actions driven by a blend of courage, curiosity, and an unwavering belief in their right to exist as equals among the stars. The stand would be remembered not as a moment of conflict, but as the beginning of a dialogue a testament to humanity's determination to face the unknown, not as disparate nations, but as a single, indomitable species. With the dawn of the Dawn Accord, the Earth was abuzz with anticipation and wonder. The initial cautious interactions with the Avarian delegates evolved rapidly into a deeply engaging exchange of knowledge, culture, and technology. The Avarians, with their sleek, shimmering ships now a common sight in the skies, became ambassadors of a universe far broader and more diverse than humans had ever imagined. The first joint initiative was the establishment of the Interstellar Communication Network, ICN, a marvel of Avarian technology adapted to human ingenuity. This network allowed for instant communication across the vast distances of space, connecting Earth with the Avarian homeworld, and, in time, with other civilizations within the Galactic Union. The ICN was a conduit for not just words, but ideas, philosophies, and the arts, fostering a deep cultural exchange that enriched both human and Avarian societies. Education systems worldwide were rapidly augmented with new curricula that included studies on galactic history, alien biology, and space diplomacy. Universities established exchange programs with their counterparts on other worlds, sending students and academics on journeys that were once the realm of science fiction. This educational revolution sparked a renaissance of thought and creativity as the mysteries of the universe became subjects of study and inspiration. On a more personal level, humans and Avarians engaged in shared endeavors, from joint archaeological digs on ancient worlds to collaborative art projects that blended styles and techniques from both species. Earth's cities hosted Avarian cultural festivals, where people could experience alien music, cuisine, and entertainment, 
marveling at the similarities and differences between their cultures. However, the path to a unified galactic community was not without its obstacles. The stark differences in societal norms, values, and physical needs between humans and Avarians, not to mention the myriad other species now entering Earth's sphere of influence, led to misunderstandings and conflicts. Legislation had to be adapted to accommodate the rights and requirements of non-human residents and visitors, while security protocols were revised to protect against potential threats, both terrestrial and extraterrestrial. In response to these challenges, the Earth Avarian Liaison Office, ELO, was established, serving as a hub for mediation, negotiation, and the resolution of interspecies disputes. The ELO worked tirelessly to ensure that the integration of Earth into the Galactic Union was smooth and equitable, advocating for human interests while respecting the principles and laws of the Union. The breakthrough in human avarian relations came with the development of the Unity Engine, a joint technological venture that harnessed the principles of quantum entanglement to enable faster-than-light travel. This technology allowed humanity to venture beyond its solar system, exploring and contributing to the Galactic Union in ways that were previously unimaginable. As humans began to travel and settle on distant worlds, they encountered species and cultures of staggering diversity. These experiences challenged and expanded human perspectives on life, governance, and the cosmos. Diplomats, explorers, and settlers alike had to navigate complex interstellar politics and ethics, representing Earth with a blend of humility and pride. Through all these changes, the spirit of Earth remained indomitable. Humans adapted, learned, and grew, embracing their place in the cosmic community with enthusiasm and determination. The contact chapter, marked by the first peaceful engagement with the Avarians, laid the groundwork for a future where humanity was not confined to one planet or limited by one perspective. It was a future filled with the promise of discovery, collaboration, and unity among the stars. The galactic community watched with bated breath as Earth, a newcomer to the cosmic stage, began to navigate the intricate dance of interstellar politics and culture with surprising grace. The initial exchange of knowledge and technology with the Avarians had sparked a renaissance of innovation and diplomacy on Earth, propelling humanity into a position of unexpected influence within the Galactic Union. The Unity Engine, symbolizing the pinnacle of human-Avarian cooperation, had not only expanded the boundaries of human exploration, but also served as a beacon of potential unity for other species. The Galactic Union, recognizing the strategic and diplomatic value of this burgeoning alliance, extended invitations to Earth's leaders to participate in the Union's Council, a prestigious assembly where matters of interstellar importance were debated and decided. As Earth prepared for its debut on this grand stage, the focus was on showcasing humanity's unique contributions to the Union while advocating for universal rights and cooperation. The delegation, comprising diplomats, scientists, artists, and philosophers, embarked on a journey to the Union's capital with a message of hope and collaboration. Upon their arrival, the Earth delegation was met with a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. Many Union members were wary of humanity's rapid ascent and the disruptive potential of the Unity Engine technology. Yet as the Earth delegates shared their vision of a unified galactic community, underscored by their planet's diverse cultures and histories, a shift began to occur. The humans' sincere efforts to understand and respect the myriad cultures within the Union, coupled with their unwavering commitment to peace and mutual prosperity, slowly won over even the most skeptical of species. The delegation's presentations on Earth's art, music, and literature captivated audiences, revealing the depth and richness of human culture. Meanwhile, discussions on technology and science, particularly in the fields of environmental conservation and sustainable energy, demonstrated humanity's readiness to contribute to the common good of the galaxy. The turning point came during a landmark session of the Council, where the Earth delegation proposed the establishment of the Galactic Harmony Initiative. GHI. The GHI was a bold plan to address the most pressing challenges facing the Union, from resource scarcity and environmental degradation to disputes over territory and trade. Central to the initiative was the creation of a multi-species task force to facilitate the sharing of knowledge, technology, and aid across the galaxy. The proposal was met with intense debate, but the passionate advocacy of the Earth delegates combined with the tangible successes of human avarian cooperation, gradually swayed the Council. In a historic vote, the GHI was approved, marking a new era of galactic cooperation and unity. As the news of the GHI's approval spread across the galaxy, Earth became a symbol of hope and progress. 
The planet's journey from isolation to a key player in the Galactic Union inspired other species to consider new possibilities for collaboration and peace. Humanity's role in fostering unity among the stars was celebrated, and the Earth delegation was hailed as heroes upon their return. But the path to true galactic unity was not without its challenges. Differences in ideology, culture, and interests persisted among the Union's members, leading to tensions and conflicts that tested the resilience of the newly formed alliances. Yet through each crisis, the principles of the GHI and the spirit of Earth's diplomacy shone as beacons of hope, guiding the galaxy toward a future where unity and diversity were not mutually exclusive, but were celebrated and embraced. The chapter of unity was not just about Earth's integration into the Galactic Union. It was a testament to the transformative power of cooperation, understanding and respect across the boundless diversity of the cosmos. It marked the beginning of a new journey for humanity, one that stretched beyond the stars into the heart of a shared galactic destiny. In the newfound era of galactic unity and cooperation, Earth's position within the Galactic Union brought not only benefits, but also responsibilities and challenges. Among these was the threat posed by the Marauders, a confederation of rogue species and renegade factions that preyed on the fringes of Union space. As attacks on vulnerable systems increased, the Galactic Union found itself stretched thin, struggling to protect its vast territories. The Earth, having experienced its own history of conflict and resilience, stepped forward with a proposal that would test the mettle of its newfound alliances and the principles of the Galactic Harmony Initiative, GHI. The proposal was the formation of a rapid response force, a coalition of Union members designed to defend against the Marauders' incursions and uphold peace across the galaxy. Earth's leadership in this initiative was a bold statement of its commitment to the Galactic Union and its ideals. The proposal, however, met with mixed reactions. Some members of the Union, wary of centralizing military power, feared the creation of a force that could potentially be used to enforce hegemony over weaker systems. Others questioned Earth's experience and motives, cautious of the young species' ambitious plans. The debates were intense, highlighting the fissures and distrust that still lurked beneath the surface of the Union's unity. Despite these challenges, the Earth delegation, supported by the Avarians and a coalition of species who had experienced the devastation wrought by the Marauders firsthand, argued passionately for the initiative. They emphasized the need for collective security and mutual aid, drawing on Earth's history of overcoming division to face common threats. The turning point came when a delegation from a system recently ravaged by the Marauders shared their harrowing experiences, lending a visceral urgency to the discussions. The vote was close, but the proposal passed. The formation of the Galactic Rapid Response Force, GRRF, marked a significant evolution in the Union's approach to security and defense, one based on mutual aid and collective action. Earth, with its strategic position and experience in rapid technological adaptation, was chosen as the training and coordination center for the GRRF. Training the GRRF was a monumental task. It involved not only military tactics and strategies, but also cultural exchange and understanding. Soldiers, pilots, engineers, and medics from dozens of species came together on Earth and other training facilities across the galaxy, learning to work as a cohesive unit despite their diverse backgrounds. The challenges were immense, from adapting technology to suit different species' physiology, to overcoming language barriers and cultural misunderstandings. Yet, these challenges were met with a spirit of camaraderie and innovation, embodying the very ideals of the GHI. The GRRF's first deployment was a rescue mission to a Union outpost under siege by Marauder forces. The operation was risky. The outpost was deep in a sector known for its treacherous space anomalies and heavily fortified by the attackers. The GRRF, led by a joint human avarian command, launched a daring assault, utilizing innovative tactics and technology developed through the Coalition's training. The battle was fierce, with both sides suffering losses, but the GRRF's unity and adaptability turned the tide. The Marauders, unaccustomed to facing an opponent so diverse yet coordinated, were ultimately repelled, and the outpost was saved. The success of the mission was a testament to the strength of unity in diversity, a principle that the Earth had championed from its entry into the Galactic Union. The Counter-Strike chapter, while marked by conflict, was ultimately a story of collaboration overcoming division, of shared values uniting a galaxy against a common foe. Earth's leadership in the formation and success of the GRRF not only bolstered its standing within the Galactic Union, 
but also reinforce the importance of unity and cooperation as foundations for a peaceful and prosperous galaxy. The success of the Galactic Rapid Response Force, GRRF, in repelling the Marauder Siege marked a pivotal moment in the Galactic Union's history. The victory was not just a military triumph, but a profound demonstration of unity and collective strength among the diverse civilizations of the galaxy. The Earth, once an isolated planet on the outskirts of galactic affairs, had now become a central figure in forging a new era of interstellar cooperation and security. The aftermath of the GRRF's first successful operation sparked a wave of optimism across the Union. Systems that had once felt neglected or vulnerable now saw a tangible commitment from the Union to their protection and well-being. This bolstered confidence in the Galactic Harmony Initiative and the principles it stood for, leading to an influx of support and resources for the GRRF. With Earth at the helm, the GRRF expanded its operations, focusing on securing the Union's borders and providing aid to systems under threat. The Force became a melting pot of the galaxy's best and brightest, with volunteers from hundreds of species bringing their unique skills and perspectives to the forefront of galactic defense. The success of the GRRF, however, did not go unchallenged. The Marauders, recognizing the threat posed by this newfound unity, intensified their attacks, targeting key supply lines and engaging in guerrilla tactics to undermine the Union's efforts. The conflict escalated, spreading to several sectors and threatening to plunge the galaxy into a widespread war. In response, the Earth-led coalition launched a series of strategic counteroffensives, utilizing the intelligence and reconnaissance capabilities developed through their diverse collective of species. These missions, often carried out in the most dangerous and contested regions of space, required not only military prowess, but also diplomatic finesse, as the GRRF sought to undermine the Marauders' support bases and negotiate alliances with neutral systems. One of the most significant turning points came with the Battle of Viridian Sector a key strategic location rich in resources and a vital junction for several major trade routes. The Marauders had fortified their position within the sector, threatening to cut off vital supplies and communication lines for the Union. The GRRF, leveraging its diverse capabilities and intimate knowledge of the sector's complex spatial anomalies, orchestrated a multi-pronged assault. Human tacticians, Avarian scientists, and warriors from dozens of other species worked in concert to outmaneuver and outthink the Marauder forces. The battle was grueling, with heavy casualties on both sides, but the unity and resolve of the GRRF ultimately prevailed. The victory at the Viridian Sector was a watershed moment, significantly weakening the Marauder's operational capacity and restoring secure access to critical trade routes. It was a testament to what the galaxy could achieve when its people worked together, transcending their differences for a common cause. In the wake of the battle, the Union convened a special assembly to address the ongoing conflict with the Marauders. The Earth's representatives, hailed as heroes, advocated for a renewed commitment to the principles of the Galactic Harmony Initiative, emphasizing the need for rehabilitation and integration of marauder systems into the Union to address the root causes of the conflict. The Turning Tide chapter of the galaxy's history was marked by significant challenges, but it was also a period of unprecedented growth and solidarity. Earth's role in uniting the diverse species of the galaxy against a common threat had not only secured its place in the Galactic Union, but it also laid the foundation for a future where cooperation and understanding bridged the vast distances between stars. The galaxy, once fragmented by fear and suspicion, was now bound by a shared commitment to peace, security, and prosperity for all its inhabitants. The victory in the Viridian Sector marked a turning point in the galaxy's struggle against the Marauders, but it also unveiled a deeper, more troubling reality. Intelligence gathered during the battle revealed the existence of a central stronghold, a hidden system from which the marauders orchestrated their raids and to which they retreated when repelled. This revelation prompted the Galactic Union, led by the GRRF and Earth's strategic command, to plan a daring and potentially decisive mission to penetrate the heart of darkness, the marauder stronghold, and confront the threat at its source. The operation required meticulous planning and the mobilization of the Union's finest minds and bravest souls. It was to be a mission unlike any before, combining espionage, advanced combat, and diplomatic overtures to species that had been coerced into the marauder fold. Earth's representatives, embodying the spirit of unity and determination that had come to characterize the human-led coalition, were at the forefront of this planning process. As the GRRF fleet assembled at the edge of known space, the mood was one of grim determination. 
The mission was high risk, with the potential for heavy casualties, but the stakes were too high to ignore. The stronghold was located in a nebula that rendered conventional navigation and sensors nearly useless, a natural fortress that had protected the marauders for decades. The first phase of the mission involved a series of feints and diversions, carried out by Allied fleets to draw the marauders' attention away from the main strike force. These actions, risky in their own right, showcased the bravery and sacrifice of those who undertook them, knowing they might not return. Simultaneously, a covert team infiltrated the stronghold's outer defenses, using stealth technology and the nebula's hazardous environment to their advantage. Among them were specialists from Earth, who had trained for months to operate in such conditions, alongside Avarian engineers and tacticians from other Union species, each contributing their unique skills to the operation. The heart of the Marauder stronghold was a sprawling complex of fortified stations and docked fleets, hidden within the nebula's densest regions. As the GRRF's main force engaged the Marauder defenses, the covert team worked to disable the stronghold's sensor net, allowing the Union fleet to navigate the nebula with reduced risk of ambush. The battle was fierce, with the GRRF pushing forward against a relentless barrage of attacks. But the Union forces, united in their purpose and strengthened by their diversity, slowly gained ground, breaking through the marauder lines to reach the heart of the stronghold. What they found there was unexpected. The marauders, so long vilified as the galaxy's scourge, were revealed to be a people driven to desperation by historical grievances and resource scarcities. Their aggressive posture was born of survival rather than innate malice, a revelation that shifted the mission's objective from conquest to reconciliation. The final confrontation was not a battle, but a negotiation, facilitated by the Earth's diplomats, who had been prepared for such an outcome. They offered the Marauders a place within the Galactic Union, with assurances of security and aid in addressing the challenges they faced. The Heart of Darkness mission, named for the nebula that had hidden the Marauder stronghold, ended not with the annihilation of an enemy, but with the extension of a hand in friendship. The Marauders, skeptical but facing the inevitability of defeat, accepted the offer marking the beginning of a long and complex process of integration and healing. This chapter in the galaxy's history was a profound lesson in the power of empathy and understanding. The Earth, once on the receiving end of fear and suspicion, had led the way in transforming a foe into an ally, demonstrating that even in the darkest corners of the galaxy, there was hope for unity and peace. The mission's success was celebrated across the Union, not as a military victory, but as a triumph of the principles that the Galactic Harmony Initiative stood for, a future where conflict could be resolved through compassion and dialogue. The aftermath of the Heart of Darkness mission catalyzed a shift in galactic perception and politics. The integration of the Marauders into the Galactic Union, though fraught with challenges, stood as a testament to the power of diplomacy over warfare. Earth, having been instrumental in navigating this delicate transition, found itself at the heart of a new movement within the Union, the pursuit of understanding as the foundation of peace. The realization that the marauders had been driven to aggression out of desperation and not inherent malice led to a broader re-evaluation of the Union's approach to conflict resolution. The Galactic Harmony Initiative, initially envisioned as a platform for economic and technological cooperation, expanded its scope to include conflict mediation, cultural exchange, and resource redistribution. A series of conferences were convened on Earth, chosen for its central role in recent galactic events and its symbolic significance as a beacon of unity. These conferences brought together representatives from across the Union, including former Marauder leaders, to discuss the root causes of galactic tensions and to explore sustainable solutions. One of the key outcomes was the establishment of the Galactic Peace Corps, GPC, a body dedicated to non-military intervention in emerging conflicts. Inspired by Earth's history of peacekeeping and humanitarian efforts, the GPC aimed to address potential flashpoints through mediation, aid, and cultural understanding, rather than force. The Corps drew volunteers from across the galaxy, trained in diplomacy, sociology, and xenopsychology, to serve as mediators and aid workers in unstable regions. Another significant initiative was the Interstellar Cultural Exchange Program, ICP designed to foster greater understanding and appreciation among the Union's diverse species. The program sponsored artists, scholars, and citizens from different worlds to live and work in alien cultures, sharing their traditions, knowledge, and perspectives. 
Earth's cities and colonies became vibrant hubs of interstellar culture, where music, art, and cuisine from dozens of worlds intermingled, enriching the social fabric of the planet and the Union at large. The road to understanding was not without its obstacles. Prejudices and old wounds ran deep, and not all were willing to embrace the ideals of the Galactic Harmony Initiative. Incidents of violence and discrimination occurred, fueled by fear of the unknown and resentment of the past. However, these challenges were met with a steadfast commitment to dialogue and reconciliation, guided by the principles that had successfully brought the marauders into the fold. As the Union worked to heal its divisions, the role of Earth and its people in facilitating this transformation was widely acknowledged. Humanity's journey from a divided planet to a unifying force in the galaxy served as a powerful narrative, inspiring species old and new to consider their place in the cosmic community. The understanding chapter of the galaxy's history was marked by introspection and growth, a period where the scars of past conflicts began to heal, and a more inclusive and empathetic vision of the future took hold. The efforts to integrate the Marauders, the establishment of the GPC, and the flourishing of the ICEP were milestones in this journey, reflecting a maturing galactic civilization that valued diversity and sought peace not through dominance, but through mutual respect and shared prosperity. This era of understanding, with Earth at its heart, laid the groundwork for a galactic community bound not by fear or power, but by the collective pursuit of a brighter, more harmonious future. The galactic zeitgeist, now imbued with a spirit of understanding and cooperation, paved the way for the formation of the Galactic Alliance, a comprehensive union far surpassing the original galactic union in both scope and ambition. Earth's pivotal role in fostering this evolution was recognized, with the planet serving as the diplomatic nexus for the Alliance's foundational negotiations. The Alliance aimed not just to prevent conflict, but to actively promote prosperity, innovation, and cultural exchange among all its members. This new alliance was built on the principles of equality, mutual benefit, and respect for sovereignty. It represented a collective commitment to peace and shared destiny that transcended the traditional power dynamics that had once defined interstellar relations. The drafting of the Alliance Charter, a monumental task undertaken by representatives from hundreds of worlds, was a testament to the complexity and diversity of the galaxy's inhabitants. Earth's delegates, drawing from their planet's own tumultuous history of unity and division, played a crucial role in mediating disputes and finding common ground. One of the Alliance's first acts was to establish a comprehensive mutual defense pact, ensuring that no member would stand alone against external aggression or internal strife. This pact was not merely a military agreement, but a promise of solidarity, offering support in forms ranging from security advisories and peacekeeping forces to disaster relief and economic aid. Another groundbreaking initiative was the creation of the Interstellar Development Bank, IDB, funded by member contributions and aimed at reducing developmental disparities across the galaxy. The IDB facilitated the transfer of technology and resources to less developed worlds, ensuring that the benefits of galactic civilization were shared by all. Earth, with its rapidly advancing technology and growing expertise in sustainable development, became a key contributor and beneficiary of the IDB's programs. Cultural exchanges and educational partnerships flourished under the Alliance, with Earth serving as both a student and a teacher in the galactic community. The planet's universities and research institutions became hubs of interstellar scholarship, attracting students and academics from across the galaxy. Meanwhile, Earth's cultural festivals expanded to include galactic art, music, and cuisine, becoming vibrant celebrations of the universe's diversity. However, the Alliance was more than just a framework for cooperation. It was a living, evolving entity that adapted to the needs and aspirations of its members. Annual summits were held on different worlds, each time focusing on a theme relevant to the galaxy's current challenges and opportunities. These summits were not only occasions for policymaking, but also for celebrating the achievements and diversity of the galactic community. The formation of the Galactic Alliance marked a new chapter in Earth's history and that of the galaxy at large. It was an era characterized by unprecedented unity and collective action, where the challenges faced by one member were met with the compassion and support of all. Earth, once a lone world on the edge of the galaxy, had become a cornerstone of a vast and vibrant interstellar society. The story of the Alliance was one of hope, a demonstration of what could be achieved when diverse peoples united under a common banner. It was a testament to the enduring power of diplomacy, 
collaboration, and mutual respect, a beacon of light in the vast expanse of space, guiding the way toward a shared and prosperous future. As the Galactic Alliance flourished, Earth's place within this vast interstellar community became both a beacon of progress and a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity. The legacy of Earth's journey from a divided planet to a unifying force in the galaxy was not only written in the annals of the Alliance, but also woven into the cultural and social fabric of countless worlds across the cosmos. The principles that had guided Earth through its darkest times and into the light of galactic unity, cooperation, empathy, and innovation became the pillars upon which the Alliance stood. The challenges that once seemed insurmountable, from the threat of the marauders to the divides within the Galactic Union, were now chapters of a shared history that served as reminders of what could be achieved when diverse species worked together for a common cause. Earth's legacy was visible in the peacekeeping missions that stabilized volatile regions, in the cultural exchanges that enriched societies galaxy-wide, and in the technological collaborations that pushed the boundaries of science and exploration. The planet had become a symbol of hope and a proof of concept for the Alliance's highest ideals. The influence of Earth and its inhabitants extended beyond political and technological achievements. Human art, literature, and philosophy found new audiences among the stars, sparking dialogues and inspiring movements that transcended species and cultural boundaries. The shared challenges and triumphs of the Alliance only deepened the collective appreciation for the diverse perspectives that each member brought to the table. As generations passed, the story of Earth's rise to prominence within the Galactic Alliance took on a mythic quality, serving as a narrative of aspiration for worlds striving to overcome their divisions. It was a story that was continually revisited and retold, not as a relic of the past, but as a guiding light for the future. Yet the legacy of Earth and the Alliance was not without its challenges. New threats emerged, testing the resilience of the bonds forged between worlds. Environmental catastrophes, technological upheavals, and ideological conflicts within and beyond the Alliance's borders posed complex new challenges. However, the framework of cooperation and mutual support that had been established provided the means to address these crises not in isolation, but as a united front. The annual summits of the Galactic Alliance, once focused on diplomatic formalities and policy discussions, evolved into celebrations of unity and diversity reflecting the dynamic and interconnected nature of the galaxy's many cultures. Earth, with its rich history of overcoming adversity through unity, remained at the heart of these gatherings, a constant reminder of the Alliance's founding principles. In this era of galactic civilization, Earth's legacy was not defined by its achievements in war or diplomacy alone, but by its role in fostering a culture of peace, curiosity, and mutual respect across the stars. The planet and its people were central to the narrative of the Galactic Alliance, embodying the potential for growth, understanding, and unity in a vast and varied cosmos. As the Alliance looked to the future, it did so with the knowledge that its strength lay not in the might of its fleets or the extent of its territories, but in the shared commitment of its members to uphold the values that had brought them together. The legacy of Earth, woven into the very fabric of the Alliance, served as a foundation for navigating the unknown challenges ahead, guided by the light of cooperation and the enduring hope for a peaceful and prosperous galaxy for all.